Hello everyone and welcome to what will be the second video on the Hockey Statistics YouTube channel. So today we will focus on score and venue adjustments. So I've just opened the same workbook that we made in the first video. And basically what we want to do today is we want to adjust the expected goals for score effects. So in order to do that, we need a bit of information. We need to know the venue, if the shooting team is home or away. We need to know the game strength state, if it's five on five or five on four or whatever. And finally, we need to know the home score state, if the home team is leading, trailing, or if the game is tied. So we'll just start off by determining the home score state. So we'll just make a column, call it home score state. And that is basically just the home score, which we already got in the workbook, minus the away score. So I'll just copy this and paste it as a value, like we did last time. It's a good thing not to have calculations in the workbook whenever you want to sort things, and the workbook is this big. So we'll just sort it, and in order to adjust for score and venue effects, we don't need to know the exact home score, we just need to know if the home team is leading, trailing, or if the game is tied. So I'll just pick all trailing situations here and rename that. And we'll do the same when the game is tied. and when the home team is leading. So now we got all the information we need in order to adjust for home score, uh, uh, score and venue effects. So we'll just add another column, call it score and venue adjustments. And then I'll just order these. And we can find on evolvinghockey.com how we need to adjust it. So we'll just go to glossary and go all the way down. to score adjustments. So we'll just start off by looking at 5 on 5 and adjust the expected goals. So we got that here. Uh, so we can just start off by looking at the home team when they are trailing. So we'll just pick the trailing home team and only 5 on 5 shots. So that's it, and the adjustment constant is 0 0.923. So we'll just put that in here. And that's the whole process. We'll just do that for when the game is tied as well. and when the home team is leading. Nine, nine, one. And we can do the same for the away team. 
the away team leading. So it's just 1 0 1. One zero five one and finally when the away team is when the home score team is trailing one zero nine one. So that's it. Uh, I don't want to do it for all game string states, but I'll just do it for the power play as well, 5 on 4. So we'll just go to the 5 on 4 as well. And adjust that. So we'll just go further down, and we got it right here. Five against four, expected goals. Uh, so the thing about score adjustments here is that when I'm looking at the home score state and the it's trailing on the power play, this is the value we put in. But it's the same value for the away team when they are shorthanded. That's what these stars means if you go further down and read it. So we don't need to. So we can look at both the home team and the away team at the same time. So we'll just put in the trailing part here. And the home team is on the power play. But the away team is shorthanded. That's what the game string state means. So we'll just put it in here. And it's 8.844. And when the game is tied, 9.12. Uh, so now we want to look at the adjustments when the away team is on the power play. So we'll just turn this one around and look at 4 and 5 instead. So now the away team is on the power play. And there's a mistake here, it's obviously 0.994. And the last one, one point. And that's basically how you adjust for score and venue effects. So I don't want to do it for all the game string states because that would be a boring video. So I'll just copy it from another workbook I got here so, so I'll just open this one and here we got all these score and venue adjustments we need so I will just make sure all the shots are coming in the right order so i've ordered it here by event index 
and then by game ID. So we need to do the same in the other one. Just fold it by event index and game ID. So now we can just copy it and paste it. So that is actually it. So in order to make the actual adjustments, we'll just need to multiply, just call it expected goals. So we just need to multiply the unadjusted expected goals with the adjustment. So now we got an adjusted XG model. So uh, before we go go further, I just want to discuss a few event string states here because there are some weird weird things going on. So for instance, zero against an extra attacker, zero against five sounds a bit unfair. Uh, so these are just uh, tracking mistakes, tracking errors. Uh, so I'll just pull them out just to show it. Five on two. Uh, so in all of the seasons you got things like this going on, but in this case there are 20 shots that are clearly tracked with some error. Uh, obviously the game was not 5 against 2. So it's just to show that there are mistakes and you won't really see these if you just look at tables at natural stat trick or evolving hockey. All the data looks smooth and mistakeless, but there are these and for now we'll just ignore them. It's We're talking about 20 shots out of uh, 150,000. Uh, so what is more interesting perhaps is to look at the zero against one and one against zero, because these are penalty shots. Uh, so these per definition have no expected goals value, which you could say is wrong, but uh, so all of these are penalty shots, either on the shootout or in, in the actual game. So we can see here there's 681 penalty shots and 202 goals. That sounds like too many. Mm. So if we're interested in just looking at shootout shots, we can just go to the fifth period because the fifth period is the shootout. So now we see there's 639 penalty shots on the shootout and 188 goals. Or we could look at the non-shooter penalty shots. And now we got 42 attempts and 14 goals. So yeah, you could even look at it in the pivot table. So we could just for instance, look at shooter and just add game period to the filter. And then we could look at penalty shots. So this is another way just to get this information. You already get it when you are working with PVP data. So we could Thought shootout goals by number of goals. 
and you see Sivanajat has five goals on 11 shot attempts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty much it. We could just, as the very last thing, just look at our adjusted expected goals. So we'll just refresh the data. And add the expected goals. So this one is the adjusted expected goals. This one is the unadjusted expected goals. So we could compare this one with the adjusted expected goals on evolving hockey. So we just go to team tables, score one venue adjusted totals. And it, we're looking at the 18th, 19th season. So it's a 147.11, which should be the same. 147.11. So that is how you could adjust your XG model with the score effects. So in the next video, I will discuss rink bias uh, because what it is and why it's important and why it exists so until then goodbye